Hey everyone, I'm Ethan with Awaken Catholic, and this is Awaken the Saint. Jesus himself said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Catherine of Siena, one of the world's greatest peacemakers. Catherine was born in Siena in 1347, one of many children in a large and relatively well-off family. She was an incredibly cheerful child, joyous and pious without fail. At a young age, she was known to stop on each stair step to pray a Hail Mary while going up or down the stairs. Her devotion to Christ, however, came at the cost of a tempestuous relationship with her parents. When she learned that they were trying to find a husband for her, she declared her intention never to marry. When they continued planning her marriage, Catherine cut off her hair, intentionally marring her beauty. This act angered her parents, and they decided to discipline her more harshly. She was made to do many chores around the house to keep her busy, and her private spaces, which she often retreated to for prayer, were taken away from her. In spite of this treatment, Catherine never complained or lashed out. She was obedient, but she still wouldn't consent to being married. Eventually, her father realized that nothing would shake her resolve and allowed her to do as she wished. Catherine became a Dominican tertiary and began a life of solitude and prayer. She would remain this way until she was 21 when a miraculous event occurred. She had a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Christ Jesus himself who placed a ring on her finger. This event is depicted in some works of art and is sometimes known as the mystic marriage of St. Catherine. This event called Catherine to action. She left behind her life of solitude, returned to her family, and began helping the poor and sick. Her activities and her natural charisma attracted all kinds of people who assisted her endeavors, including Blessed Raymond of Capua, who became her spiritual director. At this time, spurred by a number of grievances with the management of high-ranking clergy, an anti-papal league was gaining traction in several Italian territories, and Catherine found herself drawn into these politics. She spoke to many people and wrote many letters in an effort to preserve the church's unity. She also begged Pope Gregory XI to return his seat to Rome from Avignon, and in 1376, he did, ending an almost 70-year period known to some as the Babylonian captivity of the papacy. Unfortunately, relationships in Italy were breaking down faster than Catherine could repair them. Just two years later, the schism tore the church apart. Catherine exchanged letters with Pope Urban VI during this time, and the Pope even asked her to come to Rome and advise him directly. She went obediently, but was not there long before her health began a rapid decline, and she died in 1380 at 33 years old. Her wisdom, however, lives on in her well-known written work, The Dialogue of St. Catherine of Siena, which earned her the title of Doctor of the Church in 1970. Catherine was a great proponent of peace. In some matters, she was unyielding, but she never saw other people as enemies. Our goal, like hers, should always be to keep people united in the faith. St. Catherine of Siena, pray for us.